Let's learn how to set up Logic Pro with all the important basic settings and parameters before you even start sequencing. So in order to set up the project settings, go to Logic Pro and select Preferences and General. These preferences are going to be applied to any sequence, any project that you will start. So these are global preferences. There are many that we can choose from and, and we can customize, but the following ones are the ones that I really recommend you to check out. Let's go to the General tab and select Project Handling. The Startup action, it's really up to you, but I like to have it set to Do Nothing instead of opening a project or presenting a certain type of template simply because it allows me to choose an act depending on the project I'm working on. On the editing menu, I think the important ones that you want to make sure are selected are the number of undo steps. I would say at least 100. You can uh, set uh, to a higher number if you want, but you know, 100 and higher, it's a good, um, a good number of steps. I also like to have it set up so that when I right click I'm going to see the tools and shortcut menu. There are different options. You can, for example, just open the tool menu, only the shortcut menu, but I like to have it set to show me both. And I also like to have the double click on a MIDI region set to open the piano roll, because most likely that's what you want to do when you want to edit a MIDI region. After setting this basic general um, options, let's go to the audio menu. Under devices, you're going to see the information that are typical of your audio interface. In this case, I have the core audio enabled, which is usually what you want to do in order to have logic handling correctly the audio information. And the connected interface is the Scarlett right here. The input and output buffer size, it kind of depends on the type of computer and audio interface that you have. But I would say, you know, 256 or 512 is a good starting point if your computer is not very fast. But if you have a faster computer, you can go with a lower buffer size, which means your computer will be more reactive, but it will use more CPU. Make sure that the summing is set to high precision. This gives a way more precise way of handling all the uh, digital audio information. Under General, make sure that the plugin latency has the compensation set to all. So you want to have as much as possible plugin latency compensation. So that allows the computer to uh, make up for any latency that the system has. Also make sure to have the display audio engine overhead message on. This basically tells Logic to give you an alert if the CPU cannot keep up with the processing that you are requiring. The software monitoring, it really depends on the situation. We're going to go more in details about this, but basically if I check the software monitoring, it means that I'll be able to monitor any audio that I'm recording live through the computer, through Logic, and therefore through the audio effects that Logic has available. If the system is not very fast and you have a higher uh, buffer, uh, you will notice a delay between when you record or when you produce the sound and when you hear it back, which can be annoying. So usually I like to have it off and monitoring uh, directly from the audio interface. But if that's not an option, you can have it on. Now let's move on to the recording option. This is a recording file type. You can choose between AFF, WAVE, or the CAF. Either WAVE or AFF is fine. Uh, for higher compatibility, I like to have it set to WAVE. Uh, usually, if you exchange project with a PC, uh, having it set to WAVE gives you some advantages. Make sure that the 24-bit recording is checked. This is very important. You want to record your files at 24-bit. You can set up the overlapping track recordings as you want. I prefer to have it 
in merge mode for MIDI tracks both with cycle off and cycle on so I like to always merge for audio on the other hand I like to create take folder and for MIDI replace is set to region erase this can be changed by simply clicking on the drop down menu in the display options one important thing is to make sure that the clock format is set to 110 which means bar bits and ticks I like to have it set up like this because it's pretty standard for other sequencers to show it this way you could change it a little bit uh, but I think it's very important that you are fairly consistent especially if you start exchanging uh, sessions uh, with Pro Tools for example under the tracks options you can choose to have a background completely dark bright or a custom one I choose something in between I think the dark for me is too dark and the bright is too bright so I like to adjust it uh, a little bit but again this is really up to you the track color can be set up manually or automatically at 24 or 96 colors I like 96 it gives me more options and the region color you can set it up as the same as the track color or individual again this is really up to you I like to have it set it up to individual because I can change different regions and assign different colors to each region under automation one important thing is to check that you want to move the track automation with the regions you could have it set to never always or ask I find the ask a little bit annoying every time I move a region logic is gonna ask me with the dialog box do you want to move the automation with the region so in general most of the time you move, want to move it with the with the region under my info you want to put your name and the artist name you're working with and finally under the advanced option make sure that all the advanced options are checked this gives logic the full potential to really make your production shine if you have those unchecked logic will behave a little bit more like garage band once you're done you can close the window and you're ready to start a new project in order to start a new project you have different options but the one that I recommend is to choose new from template this allows you to start from presets that speed up the process considerably and even starting from an empty project gives you access to very important information for example the sample rate the frame rate the key and the tempo we can change those later but at least for the sample rate it's very important that you decide right away when you start the project at which sample rate you're going to work on and same thing for the frame rate if you're working with video in general I recommend using 48 or if your interface allows it 96 once this is set up you can just click on choose and a new session has been created logic needs a track in order to create a session and here you can choose which type of track you want to have on your project it really doesn't matter you can add or delete tracks later so I'm going to start the project with a software instrument and an empty channel strip now it's time to sequence and write your music the first time you try to save your project which by the way I recommend doing very often logic is going to ask you where you want to save it this is crucial you want to remember where you save your project so I highly recommend creating a folder with the class number and that's where you're going to save all your project so in this case I can say I'm going to start a new folder and then I can give a name 
very important i always recommend using organize my project as a folder and not a package we're going to see why when you learn a little bit more about the structure of a logic pro project but trust me use folder you definitely want to have the audio files recorded or imported saved inside the project you could also have other information saved inside the project for example the movie file i recommend having it copied to the project folder so you always know that you have the movie you're scoring inside the project folder the other things are a little bit less important it they vary depending on the project once you're done you're going to click save and now you're ready to sequence have fun